Good morning everyone! I made hundreds of figures from the games, but I never made my own figure. Let's make one. Okay, let's begin my friends, shall we? First of all, we need a vice. Don't put your pee, pee in there by mistake. It might end very badly. Okay, now we're gonna make armature. Double armature. More strength. From two aluminium wires. Yes, you're right. I penetrate two holes with my driller. I do it to place my two aluminium wires for extra protection and security. Because this figure will be pretty big. Like my pee pee. Okay, enough of those jokes. I mean, it wasn't a joke, but whatever. Now we're gonna make pretty basic things. We're gonna make the base. Base is pretty important thing in my life. It will hold the fits that I will make in the next step. And the fits will be huge, because I'm making very huge creation. On the left you should see a sketch of it that I made earlier. It is medieval fantasy creature. Yeah. Very original and very nice. Okay guys, sorry for my voice. Uh, might be a little bit dull, but I was sick around 7 days. But now I'm finally feeling better. So let's continue with the video. You deserve video because there wasn't any on the channel since 2 months. <laughs> Guys, stop, stop. I know, I know, I'm lazy, stop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the scalping. Now we're gonna finish the boots, so let's make some details here and there. And why I do it, I can tell you why I use grey clay color again. I used to use only color for my clay from like 2 years, but if you are a long subscriber, you should know that at the very beginning I use only this clay. It's super sculpty medium and firm and it's very good for the scalping and for fine details like small pee, -pee or things like that. So that's why I'm using it in this creation. It will have a lot of details. Of course, I could use color clay instead, but it would look uglier, like poo poo. And recently, I was searching for the new clay inspirations, and I found something like cos clay, bendable clay. But it recently got a Kickstarter, and now it's in production, and you can't buy it. But if it will be available, I am for sure want to try that, because I saw that this clay might be bended a lot after baking and it's not crushing and cracking. So it might be the remedy for all my nightmares with super scalping. And I mean by this that if you make for example a sharp end like finger or elf ear, it will very simply broke if you touch it a little bit too hard. So that might be something worth checking, really looking forward to it, but for now I'm stuck with this clay, but I made some smart decisions and I give up making any sharp and thin objects in this sculpture. Everything will be round and thick. No breaking, please. Okay, so as you see, I just finished armature and now I'm prolonging arms because previously I made them too short. They need to be really long because they will also hold the swords and aluminium wires also will be in the swords to avoid breaking. Breaking not nice. Now I'm stuffing clay to his belly very large amounts of clay, probably I should fill this space with aluminium foil, but no, I don't want to. I felt like if I fill it with aluminium foil, my workflow would decrease, because I'm afraid that if I add too much of aluminium foil and when scalping, I could reach the foil and then probably I should remove it cut it and things like that and I don't like it. So I take the risk and I just fill it with clay. There are chances that this clay in the belly will not bake at all 
and that it will create really big cracks but I'm ready for it this clay sometimes makes cracks even if you stuff the insides with aluminium foil so fuck it if it cracks in the baking I'm ready I'm gonna put a dry clay to the cracks and it will be like new I hope so at least time will tell all right so I fully covered the belly and now it's a really satisfying part where I just cut the excess of the clay with blade and I also carve recess for the belt and form the plate. Making that shape with all those tools was really the best part of sculpting this figure. Uh, great memories. But all good have to end one day because we moving to the chine. Die to homophobians! <laughs> really, I wanted to avoid making holes, but I can't make any other ideas how to make a chain, so I made it by making holes in clay, but in the end it looks nice. Maybe not to tripophobians. Okay, so unfortunately we have to leave the holes for now because we're moving to making all those small elements like belts, little belts and things like that. And I have to tell one thing. I may say a couple bad words about color clay, but there is one thing that color clay is good at. Small elements. Yes, small elements made in grey clay are very fragile and it's very easy to broke them. There is 8 small belts on this plate and during the scalping I mistakenly broke 2 while I was making arms. That's a loss to our country and let's celebrate it by listening to the music for 2 minutes. Okay, I'm back. Have anyone missed me? No? Hmm. I was making poop. If you were wondering. Where are we at? Ah, at making muscles. I was following the sketch, but when I do it and do it, I figured out that I need to make bigger arms so he could look okay. So I added few more kilograms of clay to the arms and we got a Shrek. But at least the arms are in proportion to his big torso. I find that first making skin and muscles is a good base for the armor and it works pretty well and I'm pretty sure that if I start doing all together like scalping those brassers and shoulders at the same time of scalping the hands, I could mess proportions, so I'm pretty happy of my life decisions. I decided that if I made a Shrek, I'm gonna think like a Shrek, so I made shoulders by the method of onion. Shrek is made of onion layers, so the shoulders should also. I applied slices of onion shaped layers of clay to the top of each shoulder and I made it repetitively. I wanted to make both shoulder pads at the same time so that the both of them would look the same and it works. Stop. <laughs> Stop, really. So yeah, some parts I made this way that I stuck some layers of clay and then I carved it. I found it more secure and fun way than making elements up front and then sticking it. After the shoulders are mostly done, I put some 95% alcohol on them to make them a little bit drunk and remove my fingerprints and make it more smooth like shaved ass. Alcohol is very good for this because after a couple of seconds it disappears. Also I cover it any parts that I previously made 
and I started adding some holes to the chain on the arms. For my dear trip hobbyists who still continues watching this video after what I said to them, we're gonna skip this part. Making those holes was really time consuming and pretty boring. Ok guys, we finally can make the head. At first I wanted to follow my sketch and make a head of the raven with the beak, but I realized that something is off with that design and I came to another great idea. Why not put a bag on his head and show only his eyes and beak? That way nobody in the comment section say bad words about his face. So I did it and I really like the final result. He looks very mysterious and you don't know what's hidden behind this bag. Maybe human, maybe beard. After all was done, I refined the details, sing some happy victory songs because I'm almost done. I made some more details, especially those belts on the bracers and I drink the rest of the alcohol to smooth my liver. Also, I put some last drops on the sculpture. So after everything was smooth, like brand new, I do some improvements to the blades and actually those are not blades but rather mammoth's teeths. At first I wanted to make blades but then I realized that they would look too thin and will freaking broke at the first occasion somebody take the figure to the hands. So I made thick mammoth blades, they are also a very dangerous weapon but nobody will fucking broke it. Ok. You just saw that I removed the figure from the vise and put it on the baking tray to make the base. I almost fucking broke it entirely because my vise lagged or something, but everything was ok. After I made the base, there was time for baking in the oven and I was quite worried about this. The packet says that I should not make parts more than 6 mm thick and I got parts more than 6 cm thick. I bake it. Everyone in the house was nervous about this. One mondo scalping just to be broken in seconds, but I convinced them that everything would be alright and I had a plan, if the cracks appear, I could still fix them. So after 25 minutes of baking, I put it out of the oven and this is the damages. One crack on the belly, one crack near the anus area. Not good, but also not that bad. I wanted to fill the cracks with a dry clay, but I forgot to buy it and I didn't want to wait 3 days for delivery, so I just filled the cracks with paint. So we moving to the next step of evolution of humanity. Painting. I covered the figure with acrylic, white base coat and I do it not one time, not two times, not three times, but 4 times. I do it because if I wouldn't do it and I apply the colors to the grey clay, the colors might change their tone to be more dark. And I really didn't want that. I wanted the colors to be vivid and stay at their characteristics. For this project I bought quite a lot of new paints from Vallejo. I chose the game color line because they were very bright and vivid and also they stated that they are very durable. So I bought like 40 pints of each color because at the beginning I had no idea how I wanted to paint it. One time I wanted to paint it in fantasy colors and the other time I thought it's quite stupid and I was thinking of more traditional medieval tones. I started from the fits and I was looking for the right color. Then I painted the trousers on brown and the idea was that he have leather pants. Of course, one layer of paint on a very bright layer underneath is not enough, so I have to make again few of them to cover the white base coat completely. I also had some few washes, so I decided to use them now to enhance the shadows on the boots. Washes are very thinned paint with a lot of water. They come and stay in the cavities and after the dry they look like a shadows. I got few of them in different colors for the different occasions, for example here I use brown wash on the panties. For the main armor I decided that I also use silver color because it's looking very nice and it's shining. But I mix it with a little bit of the black to make it more dark. 
There is one problem when you decide to not use color as it is straight from the tube. When you mix two or more colors, they dry very fast on the palette and you have to work very fast or make the color again when you will need more. The problem begins when you have to make exact the same color as before. But I managed to do it and also I put some wash on it. Some of the washes are matte and some are glossy. I got the second ones and it really matched with the silver plate armor. At first I wanted to make the chainmail dark silver but I didn't want to make it in the same color as armor so I made brassy color from three different colors. So it was like that. Let's listen to the music until I will have something smart to say. Ok, after I paint base colors and applied washes to everything, there was time to color the base and since I passed the fantasy theme idea on the armor, I decided that I will make a fantasy base, so I paint the rocks on pink and the ground on reddish brown. After that, we move to another level of painting, dry brushing. It's a technique where you just use very little paint to highlight some areas. In this figure there wasn't much areas like that, but it worked pretty good on the chain because there was a lot of dark little holes. Also the good place for it was on the leggings. I'm using the big brush with very little paint and the paint only paint the bulk areas. I use it also on the hat to make frames, also on the belt and on hands. Lastly, I used some wash on the base and then of course when it dried I done some dry brushing. The last tip was to use some glossy varnish on diamonds on the swords and make the big matte because the wash make it glossy. And now let's see the finished creation, it was quite challenging and my patience was really put to test but here we are. Now let's take a quick look how different it is from original sketch and that's it, thank you for watching, see you very soon in another video and there will be more videos on the channel, bye bye.